check out the $200 find. This is a 1995 Polaris Magnum 425 4x4. Got this pretty much as a package deal with the uh, KTM. So 200 bucks, we got to take this thing home. So the seller said he could not get it running. He said he doesn't know what's going on with it. He thinks it's a cam issue, is what he said. Um, so we're gonna be working on it today. We'll see what we can do to get this thing running. But as you can see, it's actually in really, really good shape. None of the plastics are faded. They're just really dirty. But everything's gonna clean up really good. No breaks in the plastics, no cracks. It's 100% complete. I do have the cover for the clutch and the piece of plastic right there as well. The only thing that's crappy about it are the tires. The tires leak air after about a day. So we definitely need new tires if we can get this thing running. The seat only has one little rip in it right there. Otherwise that'll clean up too. Doesn't look too bad. We have the key for it. It's only got 3,672 miles on it. So not too bad. It could need a lot of work. The guy said he's never ridden it before and he's never heard it start. So this one should be interesting. Looks like it was stored indoors at least. Looks like there's a uh, tractor muffler on it, welded to it. It's interesting what people do. <laughs> At least it's on there tight. Most people just have them hanging there. It does have a ball hitch on it. All the chains are there. Pretty tight actually. For 200 bucks. I don't know if we can really lose on this one. Vin, what do you think? What do you think of it? What do you think? What do you think? You like this one, bud? walk around none of the racks are rusty or bent I do have the one for the back as well we have to put on but this thing was just completely taken apart when I bought it let's see what's in here bunch of bolts looks like even the tail lights on there so let's see if anything lights up Nothing. So, dead battery. Alright, we got this thing in the garage. My main concern is probably going to be the crank. So, that seems pretty good. Usually if the crank bearings are gone, that clutch would be moving up and down a lot. Seems pretty tight. Um, with only 3,000 miles on it, it should be fine, I would think. But we'll see. This is a four-stroke machine. It's not a two-stroke. So that looks good. Belt doesn't look too bad. So we have hope there. Um, I think the first thing we're gonna do is hook up a battery to it. See if anything lights up here. Let's get the seat off of here. Positive to that one. Turn that on. Let's see what happens. Fan instantly comes on. Looks like it's directly wired for the fan to turn on. Looks like lights probably don't work. Yeah, high and low lights do not work. We're in low right now, nothing. A lot of times what happens is people run these without batteries. 
and it blows all the bulbs. So that's probably what happened here, I'm guessing. But yeah, it does turn on. We'll see if it cranks over. Oh yeah, not gonna crank it over too much. I don't know what's in the air filter, but it looks like electric start does work. That's amazing. <laughs> so let's see what's in the air box. There could be a bunch of mice in here. The guy has been sitting in his shed for a long time, so we'll see. There's an air filter in it. Wow. Was not expecting that. No mice to be seen yet. No penetrating oil on there. All right, air filter actually doesn't look bad at all. It looks like newer foam on there. That is something. Huh. So, we can actually put that right back on. All right, we gotta check the oil. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, there's some in there. Doesn't look that bad. It's obviously low, but there's some in there. Let's see where we're at in the dipstick. Yeah, we're at the low mark, but it looks pretty clean. You can see the spark plug down in there. plug looks like. BKR5E and GK it looks like a newer plug. Alright here we go. I bet this thing does not have spark. Let's see if it has spark here. Really hope it does. Here we go. Turn the key on. What? We do have spark. Wow. Wow. I cannot believe it has spark. So we've got spark. Everything lights up here. We're off to a really good start. Um, let's do a compression check. If we have compression, we might be able to get this thing fired up today. Looks like we've only got about 90 pounds of compression. All right, just looked it up. There's actually a decompression mechanism on the cam on this model. So compression should read between 50 and 80 pounds of compression, which we're at. So we are perfect. We're gonna quick try a faster jumper and see if it goes up in compression. Throttle open. Yeah, that shot way up. So you can see we kind of bypassed the, the decompression mechanism by spinning the engine faster. And we're at 150, 
about 180 pounds of compression. So we have plenty of compression. I am really surprised. So this thing should fire. We have spark, we have compression. Must be a gas related problem. Maybe the pump's not working. But uh, we're gonna get some oil down here. Just because it's been sitting for a while. Probably should have done that before we did the compression test, but going in just to help it out a little bit. I don't like running things dry. All right, to the carb, which I think we can't test until the tank is on there. Let's see, this is the one going to the carb over there. So this must hook up to the gas tank. And this line looks like it goes to the gas line. Here's the vacuum line. That goes to the pump. There's the pump in there. A lot of times those pumps fail too. All right, let's test out this spark plug. See if it's any good. We'll test it up to, I believe this goes to 9,000 RPMs. Let's see what that looks like. Turn this on. We're at 2,000 RPM. Sparking good. Bump that up. Let's see if it continues to spark here. Spark looks good. Nice and blue. That's 9,000 RPM, so nice blue consistent spark. So a spark plug we can use. That looks really good. All right, try to get this carburetor off. Next, take a peek at that. for the vacuum. Just get the choke to get off. This one looks like it's gonna be easy. All right, carb is out. Let's take a peek in there. 
Wonder what's going on. Ooh. That doesn't sound very good. What's that noise? All right, there's gotta be something wrong with this carb. Because we have spark, we have compression. It's gotta be fuel related. Could also be timing. The timing's off. Oh man, those are on there. Screws aren't all stripped out. That is very rare. Doesn't look too bad. A little gunk in there. Nothing too bad though. That's it. Floats working. Needles going up and down. One forty main on there. Pilot. Let's see if that's clear. Yeah, that's clear. Forty pilot. Uh, this is the fuel screw. We're one, two, about two and a quarter turn on the fuel screw. There's the spring. So we're going to leave that for now. The float's working with the needle and everything, so I don't want to mess that up and break off that tab. Something's not right underneath there. You can hear something's loose. I wonder if that diaphragm's broken. Could very well be. Yep. So this is supposed to be attached to here. Well, that's the problem. What the heck happened here? So this is supposed to be attached to here. Like that. Diaphragm actually looks good. It was just all apart. <laughs> well, that's why. That's that's definitely the problem. That's what we were hearing as well. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. 
Never in my life have I seen that. Nita looks good. Wow. That is interesting. Looks like there's some glue on there. So maybe we can melt the plastic. And get that to re seat. All right, so I went and looked in my parts bin and sure enough, we had the exact same slide in there, luckily. And same diaphragm. So we're just gonna use this one. Let's put that in, see what that looks like. You can see, fits perfectly. So that should fix our problem. Luckily we had one. This one would have been hard to fix because there's not a whole lot of plastic tab to melt down on this one. It should have like a little tab. It almost looks like somebody cut it off, honestly. But yeah. All right, we got the carburetor back together. That's how that's supposed to sound. So now that's working. All right, we got the gas tank hooked up. We're gonna see if the pump actually works. So we've got the line off the carb. Get some gas in here and see what happens. All right, I was about to connect up the line, but the line's breaking. We're gonna take this one off and uh, get a new line for it. Also, when I took this panel off, the light was disconnected from here. So I wonder if that light's gonna work when we reconnect it. All right, so here is the old gas line. We got eight feet of new gas line. Measure these up. Make sure that's not clogged. So this one I'm gonna cut a little bit longer. This one, right to here. All right, now we can get that fitted up. All right, we've got gas in it. Let's see if any gas pumps out of here. Turn the pet cockpit on. Turn this thing over. Nothing yet. Give it a little throttle. Nothing. There we 
There we go. Some's coming out now. We got a little in the cup here. Here, we'll put the filter on. Filter goes on this way. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Choke it. Pretty good. Fired right up. Sounds really good. No engine knock at all. Not gonna run it too long. We've gotta do an oil change on it before I do that. I don't want it to get too hot. Also have to check the coolant. But man, she fired right up. Looks like the pump is working too. So that is awesome. All right, we just tested the light with that plugged in. Still doesn't work, so I think the bulb is burnt out, unfortunately. Let's check the coolant. It's pretty much topped off in there, you can see it. That looks good. All right, this cover has seen better days. It's all warped. You can see that piece is pushed in, so we're gonna order up a new cover for it as well because that is pretty much junk. All right, we got the back rack on, all the plastics are on. Let's add some oil to this and change the filter. So the oil looked pretty good. So I'm gonna drain it. I think it was pretty new, but I don't know about this filter here. Yeah, it was pretty loose, so I'm guessing that's pretty new as well. But we'll get a new one on there just in case. You can see the oil looks pretty new. All right, we got a brand new Wix filter here. Put a little oil on the O-ring. some oil to it. Let's see where we're at after running it. Huh. We'll add just a little bit. Be enough right here. Oil change is done. All right, let's check the transmission oil. There's a 
little dipstick right here. Ooh. Oh, there's oil in it. This has a magnet tip. Doesn't look like any metal on there. Huh. Dip that back in and see where we're at. all the way up. And it looks pretty clear. So maybe fluids were just changed on this machine. All right, transmission oil looks good. Let's see if the brakes work. Front brake works. Hopefully the rear works. No way, the rear actually works. That's crazy. <laughs> they never work. All right, let's see if this $200 machine moves. Hopefully the transmission isn't junk. I'm thinking maybe it is. Everything was taken off this machine, so we'll see. Well, looks like we have a problem. You guys could hear on the GoPro footage. Um, we're riding this thing and it just bogs as soon as you hit full throttle. You like push the throttle all the way down and it just falls flat in its face. It's just blah. So it's really, really boggy. Um, not sure what's going on. It definitely could be the, the cam lobes are worn or the intake valves are tight. Um, it almost sounds like it's not getting enough fuel. And I noticed that when you start this thing up and you press on the air box, it actually gets better. So I tried riding it with the 
the lid all the way shut. Something broke in there. And it doesn't make a difference. It still is really bad. So, not sure what's going on. We're going to have to tear it all back down and uh, try to figure it out. All right, let's put the air box on. Way better with the air box off. I don't get it. It's really weird. And there's not even an air filter in the air box. But look how much better it runs. So it revs out completely with the air box off. All right, so it's running great with the air box off. We put the air box back on without the air filter, without anything, and it runs like crap. So I looked it up, and some people said that the cam lobes can be worn or the valves can be out of adjustment. So we're going to look and uh, see if those valves are out of adjustment. It's weird because it starts up and idles perfectly. Compression was high, so I'm kind of leaning towards the cam lobes. And that's what the seller said. He said that he thinks it's the cam lobe. So we will uh, check that next and uh, I guess we'll see. So this cover has to come off right here and then we can check the top dead center by the bolt right behind here, right there. So we can take that off and there should be a mark on the flywheel. Try to get this off. All the bolts are out. Alright, that's what that looks like in there. Okay, your intake valves right here, and your exhaust valves back here. Cam chain's nice and tight. Let's see the cam. It's hard to see in there. All right, we'll set this thing to top dead center, and uh, we'll see if our valves need adjusting. All right, we're at top dead center. You can see. Intake valves, both open, same with exhaust valves. So it was not the valves. That is really strange and the cam lobes look really good down there. They don't look worn or anything. All right, so valves look good, cam looks good, carb looks good, everything checks out. It's really weird that it runs perfect without the air box. So it's gotta be the air box. And uh, looking at this thing, you can see it actually broke in a couple spots right there and right there. I'm not sure what that was from, but what we're gonna do is plastic weld that, or try to, so that we can get a tight seal on this. I saw another YouTube video where a guy had the same problem, and he said that 
the air box wasn't closing properly and that's why the ATV wasn't running properly. So same here, when I pushed on the lid it seemed to get better but it wasn't perfect. So maybe if we can get a nice tight seal, it will be perfect. So we're gonna be using some of these staples to make it more secure and then we'll go through with the plastic stick here and melt it onto there to make it extra strong. All right, you can buy these off of Amazon. They're like 30 bucks. So what this thing does is heat up. That should get red hot and then we'll melt it into the plastic. You can see it's getting red right now. It's getting red. this attachment on there and then melt some of this on All right, we fixed that up. That's really nice and strong now. So let's see if that fixes our problem. All right, we've got the air box back on. The lid is now secure. Let's see what happens now. I think that might have been the problem. It's revving out now. All right, so I thought this thing was fixed, and uh, it was not. So we took this thing for a ride. It did pretty good. It was definitely better, but it was still boggy. And what I did was just close off that a little bit with some tape, because I had my hand over it, just trying to see what it was. It was sucking in my hand pretty good. And when I put my hand on it halfway, it would rev out completely and run really good. So all I did was put some tape around it, and now it's running perfect. So, I don't know, I'll figure that one out. The, the box must not be closing properly, is what I'm thinking. But uh, it needs a little bit more resistance for the carb slide to open all the way. I don't know if it needs a new air box or what, but a little tape trick seems to work. And that's all you need, so. I don't know, very, very strange. I'm not sure why it's that finicky. Um, I looked up on forums and they said all these 425s, you need the air box and it needs to be perfectly tight in order to work, otherwise it's going to run like crap. So, I don't know, very, very strange. I've never had a carb act that weird. But yeah, we got fixed, so let's take for a little test drive and uh, see what happens here.
All right, made it up to the land. A little update on the crop situation. Nothing poking through yet. I see a couple deer tracks though walking throughout, so we'll have to get that fence up ASAP. But uh, trees are doing good so far. Also have to get a fence around these before winter. But these are these are looking really good. We had rain like this whole week, so that was good for the apple trees. But uh, yeah, let's test out the Polaris Magnum 4x4 and uh, see if it's fixed. Pretty sure it is, I took it for a ride at my house and it worked flawlessly, so we'll see the day.
Well, this machine is officially fixed. Zero bogging. Goes full speed without an issue. And it's running really, really good. So tightening up that air box seemed to fix our problem. And then I had to add a little tape to the intake there. And that seemed to make it even better. At least we found the issue with it. Um, and at least it wasn't the cam or the valves that were, uh, that were causing problems. So the $200 ATV is fixed. We do, however, have to buy the clutch case cover because it's a little sketch riding that with your leg right next to the clutch. Because if that belt came off, your leg would be toast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, other than that, this thing is good to go. Not bad for 200 bucks. And you can see it's pretty clean. We'll give it a good wash and uh, this one will be done. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on this one. Picking it up for 200 bucks, diagnosing it, getting it to start, getting it to run, and then getting it to run right. <laughs> this one took a bit of thinking and a bit of diagnostics work, but we finally got it and it runs great. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out. All right, here it is all cleaned up. Just uh, freshly pressure wash. Looking pretty good.